Cool. So um, this segment is all about the future of search marketing. And I love that so many people are vested and want to talk about search marketing because it's a passion of mine. But there was a period about three years ago where we had kind of the mini version of these Insight Labs at our summit. It was roundtables. Uh, it was a breakout in a secondary room. Yeah. And uh, rather than having a sign rotation, we just put up a sign and waited for people to come to us. And I sit there at my paid search table and I watch people go to the social table and the video table and the, you know, the, all these other things. And no one really wanted to talk about paid search. And then enhanced campaigns came around and everyone wanted to talk to me again. Yay. So. <laughs> So uh, I'm Jeremy Hall. I'm the director of Bot Media at iProspect, overseeing Bot Media within the U.S. Uh, I'm Nadine Burke, I'm vice president of optimization at Icebar. Cool. And we're here to talk to you about search marketing, which these days is all about intent and context. So using everything that the user is telling us in order to provide a more relevant response. So the challenge in front of us is that paid search has evolved and users expect more. So cast your mind back to the first time you used a search engine. You actually had to learn a different language in order to interact with it. You had to use Boolean operators, and, or, not. You had to use plus signs, minus signs, in order to get a relevant response. You had to actually communicate like you were talking to a computer. Search has evolved. Now it is more, much more like human conversation. It is much more casual. And users expect to be able to just communicate their, what they're looking for into a search engine and get a relevant response. The bar has been raised. And so as advertisers, if we're not doing our job and listening to everything the user is telling us and then processing that and giving them a thoughtful response, we're actually giving them a bad brand experience because the bar has been set so high, users are impatient, and if that doesn't happen, they, they get the feeling that the brand doesn't care about them or isn't listening to them. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I, and I think the expectation is also by being shaped by other things they interact with the nest and the everything else they interact with is sort of tells them that, you know things should understand me these machines should understand and, and adapt to me so i think that's also a factor in the changing expectation yeah. and so really the solution is to become human in search users are interacting with the search engine as if they're having a human conversation we need to make sure that we're responding with a hum thoughtful human response um, the way that we do this is something we like to call search intent optimization leveraging user intent both declared and inferred in order to deliver the right message to the right person at the right time. And so we've got several sources we can tap into to gain this intent, but the great thing about paid search is it begins with declared intent, and that's the foundation of paid search, which is the keyword. The user is telling us what they're interested in. Not only that, but by doing a search, they're raising their hand and say, they're saying, I'm open to hear your marketing message right now. They're actively engaged in a conversation, and we have a great opportunity to listen carefully and respond back. So one of the great things about paid search is that it's always evolving, always iterating, and it's actually able to evolve very, very quickly. So there are several things that drive the evolution of paid search. The first one is really the users voting with their clicks. So this is really what Google was able to build when they created the concept of quality score. Before Google launched AdWords and had quality score, paid search was just purely about dollars. Whoever had the most money to throw at searches could reign supreme and get top ranking. And I won't lie, there were days back then where I would bid, see someone bid 15, bidding $15 on a Friday afternoon. I'd put my bid up to $14.99. I'd click on their ad a few times. Um, but, you know. <laughs> no, of course, no, no, no. Um, but really, at that point, it was, it was a dollars game. And user experience was really kind of second, you know, wasn't, was deprioritized because the engines were trying to capture money. Um, and then Google came along with the concept of quality score, which discounts advertisers for relevance. So if you're providing a good user experience, you're picking and choosing a thoughtful place to show up, you have good messaging. As voted on by the crowdsourced users of the engine, you get a discount, you get a benefit to that. And that's also how Google is testing, all, and all the other engines are testing their new, fe new features. As they roll out new ad extensions or new ways that ads appear, they're looking at how the users interact with them and using, once again, that is a crowdsourced real-time relevancy test. Um, the other way that drives the evolution, the other thing that drives the evolution are uh, agencies and brands finding new ways to use these features. So the engines release stuff for a certain reason. We come up with an alternate way to approach it and are able to pivot away from that and find a new use for it that drives value to our advertisers. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So kind of looking at how search has evolved. Um, keywords, once again, are the declared intent. And back in the day, as an agencies, we were basically keyword factories. We were churning out 
thousands and millions of keywords so that we could catch all this traffic. Um, I remember uh, when I got started in the industry, we were very proud of this tool that we had built. And it was a typo generator. And what it did, it, it, had no, it didn't like plug into any kind of user experience or algorithm or anything. It just, you entered your brand keyword and it looked what letters were next to those letters in it on a keyboard and swapped them out and came up with a couple of hundred variations of your brand if someone fat fingers and mistypes. And then we would load those up into our paid search campaign because those were getting search volume. Nowadays, what happens if you have a typo in your search? The search engine says, did you mean this? They're smart enough to understand that so we don't have to do this goofy, you know, casting this wide net because search has evolved. We've got semantic search, we've got match types that allow us to cast a wider net and then mine that for queries and new intent. And so it's, it's less machine-like and it's more just about focusing on people's intent and leveraging how the search engines have evolved and how those conversations have improved. Um, then we also look at secondary signals for inferred intent. So the, the specific examples of these are uh, device and geographic location. Remarketing lists for search ads are also a great secondary signal for past behavior. Geographic location specifically is a great example of functionality that the engines released for a specific reason that we then repurposed. So when Google started adding geotargeting, you know, more micro and micro geotargeting by DMA, by city, by zip code, now you can just go in and draw a shape on a map and target those users. Um, it was really meant, it wasn't meant for the, the large national global advertisers. It was meant for people who had restrictions. So it was so they could cast a wider net and get all the mom and pops advertising on AdWords because you don't want to advertise outside of the town you're in, but now you can advertise within that town. We were actually able to repurpose that and come up with a philosophy that geosegmentation is actually a good approach for all advertisers. You can split out your top cities, manage them separately. You can split out growth opportunities and create clone campaigns. For one advertiser, we um, split out the top 10,000 zip codes and everywhere else. And when we have to cut budget, we cut it from everywhere else rather than pulling from those top zip codes. And all of these examples are things that we've been doing for years and things that I was kind of thrilled to hear uh, uh, Smita, uh, who is in charge, the Google AdWords rep, who's in charge of geotargeting at the AdWords Performance Forum. She presented a couple of days ago when I was there and she got up on stage and she used all those examples. And it was Google basically telling the story that we've been preaching for the past four years. And so they released it for this reason. We've seen great success. That filters back to them. And now they're working on building more functionality around that use case, even though that wasn't the original intention. The functionality they have right now um, is really around bid modifiers. And bid modifiers are really useful. That's kind of what Enhanced Campaigns was built around. But really being human in search is more than just bidding up or down based on these secondary signals. You wanna make sure you're actually having a conversation. You wanna customize your message to the user based on what you know about them. You want to do your budget prioritization just as I was talking about earlier with the top priority zip codes and everywhere else. Figure out, um, also looking at like remarketing lists for search ads. Is it worth it to spend more on a user who has never converted than a user who has already purchased? And being able to make that decision in real time when a user is searching. And then looking at different KPIs and goals. So again, you may have a, a growth market that you're more concerned with new customer acquisition. For mobile, you may have a different goal as far as uh, getting app installs, or those sorts of things. And then finally, the landing page experience when the user gets to the site. So this is where you fulfill the promise that you've made to the user by being present when they searched, by giving them this message. And I think that's, that's a real big opportunity that's still kind of untapped in the digital marketing world is continuing that conversation so that when they get to the site, they feel like it's just part of an ongoing conversation. Yeah, and, and, and I, think, I think that's so sort of, we were talking earlier, it's, it, that's the sort of the last broken mile of advertising, right? We, we, we have amazing ways to get in front of the right people at the right time with the right message, but the landing page often fails to deliver on that. And, and it's not because we don't know how to do it, it's just it, there's so many combinations. You know, 15% of the searches that happen every single day, even Google hasn't seen those before, so how can we predict those? So I think the idea really is, sort of thinking of a landing page as, a, as an answer to the user's question, right? It's like, I asked you a question on search engine, I gave them a relevant message in the right time, now how do I sort of respond to that? So it's the, so really simplifying it, it's about acknowledging, hey, I got your message. If you search for certain, something, sir, having visual cues or, or headings on the page, hey, you're in the right place. Giving them relevant information, not too much, not too little, and then conversions don't happen on the landing page, right? But then having contextual sort of call to action that move them in the right direction. Hey, based on your segmentation, I think this is the next thing you should do. Uh, and, and one of the good ways to sort of understand the intent is, number one, as Jeremy said, 
users are telling you. So that's the first cue. Like I search for something, obviously I raise my hand and I told you that. The second thing you can do is there's a lot of analytics data that's sitting on your side. You can go and segment users based on keywords in the past who made the sort of who converted and say, well, how did people who typed this segment behave? What was their conversion rate? What was their revenue per transaction? Things like that. That should start to validate. Okay, I think this person, based on the keyword, is at the top of the funnel. The conversion rate tends to prove that because it's pretty low, and the revenue per transaction is X, Y, Z. So it's getting that, and then secondary signal, device, geo, where they are, have they interacted with the brand in the past, all those things sort of come into play. <clears throat> and a good way to sort of... Thanks. The good way to sort of distill that, all that information into something that's sort of understandable and actionable is really building these search personas. So we all, all always talk about user personas. And user personas are great because they talk about the whole journey, what this person wants, and what's his demographic. But as I said earlier, keyword at that moment, the user has one intent. Give me that information and let me go through that. Don't think about the overall persona because this search is instant within that instance within that journey, so act on that. And, and then when you understand that, it's really all about dynamically delivering a landing page experience that actually speaks to these people. So it's, it's about giving them the content, but also the context, right? So if they've, if they've typed a product-specific keyword, don't give them a category page, right? If, they give, they give, if they're at the higher of the giving, searching for a category, don't give them a product page. So don't go too narrow, not too, not too far. And we built a platform exactly to do that, which is taking that intent and building dynamic learning pages for, for the users. And we've done that for a couple of our key clients, and the results have been phenomenal. So taking that user intent from the search to the message to the landing page delivers significant results. And I think that's, that's really fixing that last broken mile is, is really the key when it comes to sort of delivering on that intent and understanding it. Absolutely, because it, you know, if you're just harvesting that intent and getting them to the site, you've only done half the work. Exactly. So, you know, looking to the future, um, every few weeks you'll see an article pop up, the death of the keyword. I mean, that's like the, the cool new headline to write about. Um, ultimately, I don't think the keyword is ever going to go away. It's going to change. It's going to evolve, especially with voice search. It's going to become much more conversational, but there's always going to be that user-initiated interaction. But the takeaway from this is that there's going to be more opportunities to leverage these secondary signals for context. So we all know that Google has been doing testing with demographic targeting with age and gender. The last time they ran one of those tests was a couple of years ago. They're being very careful about rolling this back out. I, I hit some people up uh, over beers at the Google event a couple of nights ago and was like, hey, when are you rolling it out? And they're like, hey, we'll let you know. Um, so they've got all that built, uh, but they're being very careful about how they give advertisers access to that information because they want to make sure that it's, they're still providing good user experience and not just pandering to advertisers to spend more money. Um, and then we've got these developments like Google Now and Cortana. So Cortana is the new uh, virtual digital assistant that Microsoft has released to compete with Siri that gets to know you over time and adjusts. Google Now, I'm a huge Google Now fanboy. How many people here have the Google Now app on their phone? It's so much fun to play with. So basically, you're sharing more information with Google across the ecosystem, and then when you open up the app, their goal is to show you what you need to know without you having to do a search based on all of this information. So. For example, uh, two days ago, I woke up at my hotel in San Francisco. I opened up Google Now, and it knew that I had a flight coming up because the confirmation email had been sent to me. And it told me the flight status, and it knew where I was at my hotel, and it, said, and it told me what time I needed to leave to make my flight. And then it told me what the weather was in Austin, Texas, because it, it knew that's where I was going. And so this is Google providing answers before you even ask. And so there's going to be monetization opportunities there at some point. But once again, Google's being cautious because they don't want to break that level of trust that they have with the user by providing anything that's not incredibly relevant. So ultimately, the takeaway here is more effective conversations with your audience, with your customers. Better understanding your customers' needs in the moment, in the moment that matters in real time. Providing more relevant response that they can relate to that is helpful and informative and based on everything that they've shared with you. And then ultimately driving increased performance, whether that's CPA, ROI, traffic, interaction. And the way that we get to all of this is just by, once again, becoming more human in search and making sure that we're treating each of our searchers and each of our audience members as an actual human with needs that they're coming to us, they're coming and asking a question, and we can listen very carefully to all their declared and inferred needs and provide the most relevant answer. Any questions?
Can you talk a little bit more about the dynamic landing pages as you were describing on uh, your persona based creating pages, I imagine, but then there's some real dynamic changes based yes. on the searches? Yeah, so the, 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 the essentially the idea is we're loading up all the schema data and persona into the tool and saying, well, here's my segmentation and based on the buy and I'm going to say this is, a, this is a persona with a buy. So what happens is, let's say somebody comes in and types in product number this lamp. We, as, the, as, as the keyword hit the engine, it basically says, I know that's a persona, that kind of keyword is in persona this. I'm going to give them a key a landing page with the product, but I'm going to push them to buy. I'm going to have a bigger call to action, and I'm going to have a sort of, because I know they're here. And I need to tell them why buy from us. While somebody coming in and saying lamps, when I'm going to give them a category, I'm going to say, hey, here are all the collection and all those things. I'm going to, now I'm going to push them. So it's really sort of putting this persona into action and saying it's being human, it's understanding that it's, and, and changing the experience dynamically on content and experience dynamically on the landing page. That's where you saw the lift, the you know, phenomenal lift from, from GM and Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of your current lab. We have Thank five you. minutes. Thanks. 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 Thank you guys very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.